Hey everyone, Miranda Patron here, back to do another stone painting with you. Um, I have this nice oval stone here today, which I'm actually kind of bummed it's got some deposits on it, so I'm going to paint it completely black, just so we can have a nice even background to start our mandala on today. So that's what I'm going to do first, is completely paint the whole stone black. Okay, so... One of the main things with doing a mandala is you want to keep your symmetry. So we kind of need to find the general center of our stone. Unless you want to do it off center on your stone, then you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to find or keep your symmetry and keep the design mostly centered on your stone, then you have to find the center of your stone. So we're going to do that with a tape measure here. And just get like a rough estimate of the length of this stone is about four and a quarter. And you can just use a pencil to mark. So half of four and a quarter would be at about two and, what is that, 2.12? But really it's like right around the line before the quarter there. And then halfway between this one, which is three on the nose, cool. So we have 1.5. So then we have a little mark there for the center of our stone. And this one, because I paint, painted the whole background black, I'm not going to do a background on it. I'm just going to keep the black um, completely and do it without a circle background. So it's not quite dry yet. I'll just go over the colors that I'm going to use today. I usually don't have a plan for the Medalla design. I usually just kind of pick a general color palette that I want to start with um, and go from there. And depending on the size of the stone and what design flourishes you add to it, it just can only go to the size of your stone. So I use the Deco Art paints. And this one here is like a buttermilk. I'm going to go with kind of the sea greens and misty yellows that I used on a recent design. See here, if I can get it to work. There we go. So kind of like the misty greens and your ocean type blues. This one's kind of like a slate blue. Um, yeah, and some grays in there too. So we will start off with that for our palette. And go from there. I will be using brushes to paint my design today and I have a couple brushes here from US Art Supply which are great liner brushes. They're under half an inch, half an inch or under for the length of the bristles and their size they have them listed as an 18, 18 zero. And then I also have my angle spot detailers from Princeton that I like to use, which many of you have asked about. Um, so it's just a bent paintbrush. It's still got bristles, soft bristles. And this one they have listed for theirs as a 10-0. So it's a little bit bigger, but I basically just use those to create the whole mandala. And you can use dotting tools, you can use... Um, larger paint brushes. Sometimes I use my soft round acrylics, which have been used quite a bit, <laughs> as you can see. But they're just soft, larger acrylic brushes. And some people use nail dotting tools or stipple tools. Um, some people use the end of crochet hooks or um, drill punch sets. Basically anything that is circular you can dip and paint and put it on there but we're gonna go with brushes today for this video
So one thing you might find helpful is to draw yourself some guidelines. Um, if you take your tape measure, like I usually just start from the center dot and work my way out, but if go back to with your tape measure or ruler and just kind of draw some a plus sign where you made your center, then you could see it better and see where the lines go out to. It may help you to follow the line to keep it symmetric. And then another thing that people might find helpful is to grab a compass, just like a dollar store compass, and give yourself some guidelines that way too, just by drawing circles at various sizes as you work your way out the stone, just to kind of give it an idea of what lines to stay in and what size design you can use, but I think that's helpful for making mandalas if you're just starting out. Alright, so... Since I'm not going to go with super bright colors, I'm just going to still add in some of the metallics that I really enjoy working with. Um, this one actually is from Folk Art. I think it's gunmetal gray. And that's what I'm going to use for my center on this stone. So I'm just using the angle spot detailer. And I get a ton of paint on it. A lot of people thought I was dipping or using some kind of filled paint pen. It's not, it's just a paintbrush. I just, I'm a little crazy with loading the paint on. And the folk art ones, some of them can be a little tacky. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me see. Where it'll stay attached to your brush or your tool. So you really pull up on it straight so that it doesn't flap over and land somewhere else on your design. I just want to make this a little bit bigger here. But if you do end up with paints like that, that are tacky, just be wary of that. Okay, so to start off on a basic mandala, your first dots, your smaller dots here are going to go in the shape of a plus sign. So top, bottom, left and right. And that kind of helps you to start off your pattern there. And then on a 45 degree angle, we're just going to tuck a couple more dots in between all those 90 degree angles we just used. So your plus signs are your 90 degrees, and then off angle is 45. Okay, so I just used white to do those smaller start off dots, and now I have slate gray, which is in the deco arts. And I'm going to go in between the dots that we just made with the slate gray and go a little bit bigger for a dot. Okay, so now we're going to kind of add a little flourish in here that I call an S-curl. And I have a dotting tool here that I broke the end off of so that it's pretty sharp, but you can use an etching tool or a thumbtack or you could even use pencil. It's just they're a pain, it's a pain to um, erase after the fact. So I am going to create this little S-curl by etching it onto my black background. And it's just going to be a nice little addition to the stone because it's going to help us to leave some negative space so your black background will show through. And I'm just going to do this all the way around above each of the white dots that I made. And this is a little more advanced because you're going to have to get really small with the dots. but you can do it.
So this also is a good example of how you keep your rock balanced or your design balanced because there's a lot of math in this. <laughs> so you measured for the stone, you get your numbers, and then you're measuring on your angles. And then this is, you know, the basics of symmetry or keeping it balanced are like an equation. So what you do to one side, you got to do the other. So what you do to one, you have to do all the way around. And that'll help keep your design symmetric. So the thing about etching, too, that's helpful is that I can always, if I'm not totally enamored with how I did one, I can erase it just by wetting it. And it comes right off. That's the good thing about a background, also, is that if you make a mistake, you can always just go back and paint over whatever the thing that you weren't happy with is, with the black or whatever background color you're using. Then we're just going to pick a color and do our little curls. I think I'm going to continue on and do the S curls of mine in white. And I usually start at the center of the curl because then as you work your way around where you want the dots to be smaller, the paint will come off the brush less and less as you work your way around. So that you kind of get that look of where they get smaller. See, I messed that one up. Because my paintbrush just split. So with something happens like that, super simple, don't stress. Just grab a little bit of your background color. And then once it's dry, you can just paint over it. And redo that one dot, rather than the whole stone. Or scrapping your project. You can see as you work your way around it, more and more paint comes off the brush and your dots will get smaller and you also can push down harder for the bigger dots and lighten up as you go around to get smaller. And also the thing with etching these at the end when I varnish my stones. It's just like as if you were putting water on it. It gets rid of all the the etch lines. So I don't have to worry about erasing anything.
And then you have all your little S's. I think before I forget to, I'm just going to tuck some smaller ones in here just for... You could wait till your whole design was done and then go back. But sometimes as it dries, I like to just toss a few in between. And it, like I said, it varies on the size stone and what you feel like doing for your design. So, All right, let's start getting into some of these colors. I think I'm going to go with... Spring green. And we're just going to do two, maybe two, two little dots above our slate gray in between our S's. I'll leave that there. So right here, in between our S's, I'm going to just go with two dots of the spring green on each. Okay, so the next one I have is Night Sky, and I realize that this is a multi-surface one, so it's a little different to work with, um, but I'm just going to do some dot drags with it, comma, strokes, swipes, whatever you want to call them, um, so it's not going to be that much of an issue. Doing the dots on some of the multi-surface ones can be difficult, but just because the consistency is a little more I don't want to say difficult, it's just different to work with, so it just takes a little getting used to. And I really love this night sky color, so that's what's going to have me using it today. <laughs> so, now where we put the greens, I'm going to take it from the green and go to the top of the S with just a swipe. And you can do this with a brush, you can do this with your dotting tools. Maybe I'll show you with the dotting tool as well so you can see. Because I know a lot of you like the tools better. I'm just taking it from the green. Out of focus. There we go. Take it from the green. And just kind of drag it up as you go. And with the brush I'm pushed down harder at the beginning. And then you just gently lift it up as you finish the end. So push down harder for the fatter part. And then gently lift it up at the end. And that takes some practice too, but here I'll show you with the dotting tool because these are such a small design, you want to go with probably the smallest stipling or dotting tool that you have. So I'll use my little picky one. The sharp etching one that I used. That's probably got too much paint on it. So you'll be able to tell the more you do it, depending on which tool you use, how much paint is going to come off the tool. So you still push down hard at the beginning and then the paint will run out from your dotting tools as you come around. So you got to kind of gauge how much you need on there to make the distance that you're doing your swipe or your dot drag. So because this is a smaller stylus, then obviously it's going to have less paint on it. And they're a little different shaped than I can get with a paintbrush, which is not a big deal. It's not different enough to ruin your design. So but you can see you just get a good amount and you want to get the same amount of paint each time. Start at the dot and drag it up wherever you want it to finish. <laughs> and 
And it's just another nice little addition to a mandala. If you're, you know, wanting something different besides dots all the time, then this is a great thing to add to your design. I've been doing it for years, so you get a little better muscle memory if you've done it quite a bit so that's why the brushes and I just work with what I'm used to working with but you can do it with the tools too see all right so that was a nice dark dark blue and now for a little bit of contrast I'm gonna go with a spa blue which is kind of like a super light turquoisey color And I'm just going to do a fairly large dot. Well, maybe I'll do them in between. We'll dot in between our swipes that we just did. I'm pretty sure they're dry enough. So just in between each of these here. Really loving these subdued colors too. I suppose you could add some purple and pastel pinks and you'd have an Easter palette too. You could do an Easter themed design. Alright, so generally I don't deviate from the deco arts too much because I really enjoy their paints and their great consistency, as I've said in the past for dots, but this teal aqua aqua color is just phenomenal from folk art and I've yet to be able to mix it the color that I want <laughs> so I'm gonna go with using this the thing about these type of paints though is they're a lot heavier bodied so they're thicker and you can thin them you can put a little bit of water in with them or a, a flowing medium mixed in um, but I'm just gonna do a few dots with them so you could use this, you could use a different color, darker teal, aquamarine. I mean, you can make the mandala your own. But this is just what I'm going to go with here. I think. I'm hoping. Let's see if it works. Let's see these thicker ones. I'm alright with it having a peak for this because I'm going to do a lighter dot over it after it dries in the center to do some top dots. But I generally, that's another reason why I don't use these to dot with, because I not, I don't really want the peaks in my design. It feels cool after they're dried, it's like braille on a stone, and some people do all of their stones in with peaks, which is awesome, it looks amazing. It's just my own personal preference, so just take that with a grain of salt, I guess, that it's my own personal desire to not have the peaks. A great color. Okay. I think too I'm actually gonna go around each of those aqua dots with some smaller dots. Maybe I'll do two rings around. One thing about the thicker paints is they don't move a lot on your piece, so it's a, a plus because then you don't have dots running into one another and you can actually work a little faster by going, like right now I'm doing two rings in a row, which ordinarily I'll just do one ring and then I move on and then I'll come back once this ring is dry so that I don't have the dots bleeding into one another. But because these are a heavier body... I can do this 
because they're less likely. I'm not saying it's impossible to have them run into one another, but they're less likely to run in <laughs> to each other. Okay, I think I'm going to go back to that spring green that we used earlier again here. And we'll do a dot above each of our swipes. And 
now we're going to go with the Williamsburg blue. And we're going to do a larger dot above the green. Yeah. I've had a lot of people ask me if I can get up closer to show how I'm painting the larger dots, but I'm not really sure how much closer I can get at this point because I have the camera literally four inches here <laughs> away from the stone. Um, I don't know if you mean you want to see it from the side, but really I'm just painting a circle with the dots. I'm just painting a larger circle. Oh, here's a little see it from the top and then I'll maybe turn it from the side. So this is what it looks like from the side, I guess. I'm not really sure. Like I said, the camera's really close. So much that it's in my way sometimes when I'm painting. And if the dot's not as perfect as I want it, you can just keep redrawing it while it's wet. And the brushes are decently soft, so they just kind of help you spin it around, push the paint around. I think it's better when it's up in the air. I'm not really sure what more advice I can give on getting it other than just practice, practice, practice drawing circles or painting circles around and around. I've just been painting for a really long time, so you get like a muscle memory. Okay, I think I'm going to go back to the white, and I think, rather than do dots around, I think I'm going to do kind of like a triangular shape. So, top, but go work our way down to the aqua. You can see it better if I use the angled brush. Let's try that.
it's not officially triangle shaped because we're not going around a pointy object, we're going around a dot, so it's going to be a little rounded at the top, and then, but rather than just going around the dot, I'm working it out kind of like an arc so that we reach the aqua sides that we already did, or the aqua rings over here on the side. Plus this type of where you stretch it out also will leave you some negative space so your background shows through again. I apologize also for the long silences for those of you who have not seen these before, these videos. I tend to hold my breath, <laughs> especially when I'm doing the smaller dots. Um, I'm sure a lot of you do too. I don't know. I've had people actually tell me they hold their breath while they're watching it being painted. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so, And plus YouTube goes through things where you can't have copyrighted music in the background, that type of thing. So a lot of times when I paint, I do listen to music, but... If I'm doing these type of videos where I have to talk, it's easier, I think, for you guys to hear me if I'm not playing music in the background. Okay, I think I'm going to go back to that Dark Night Sky one again. Just because I'm mildly obsessed with it. <laughs> no, just because I like the contrast, too. When you go light, dark, light, dark, I just really enjoy that on a piece. So We did white, now we're going to go dark. Just follow the white ones that you just did. So again, this is the night sky, deco art multi-surface. Let's switch the design up just a little bit here, and we're going to go back to that spa blue, the lighter turquoisey one. And rather starting, rather than starting with the larger dots from the outside, I think I'm going to start down in with some larger dots here.
So they're going to get smaller as we get to the top. I think I'm going to just do it on one side because I'm going to put some a little more movement into this piece. We'll do some more swipes. So in keeping with the spa blue, do I want to keep with the spa? Yeah, let's keep with that. And I'm going to start at the top of our design here, and then you're just going to do your swipe down and in. Up, down, And the same thing with these. The more you paint, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. So just take your time at first and go slow. Push down hard, work your way around the area, and then lift up at the end. Push down, go slow around, and I'm gently picking up when I get to the end. I think I'll tuck a little white one in next to that and finish off the spiral design we have going. You can keep your paints kind of fresh if you pour down too much with a wet paper towel. Um, sometimes I just only pour what I need for that ring around or whatever and then pour more later if I decide to use the same color. So. That's a little helpful hint. So I think on this, I'm going to start down a little farther on this swoop. And I, I don't know if I set it on this one or not, but when you're doing your design, if you've chosen something to work all the way around, you should just make sure it'll fit in all the spaces that you've decided to put it. Which I didn't do, I don't think, with this one. So. But you get used to just eyeballing to what you think you can fit in there. Or can I fit another ring of dots around or a couple of swipes? And and if not, it, it's not the end of the world. It can be off-center and different on each side. That's the way art can go. Also, it just makes it original, too. Because then you know it's your design. So, one more little guy here. Yeah. 
So now when the center dots have decently dried is when you can go back and add top dots or other little designs in between if you want to tuck extra stuff in there. Like if you wanted to put something on either side of your green, you could do that. Or I think I'll do top... Oh, the peaks aren't that bad actually on here, but... I was going to do the spa blue top dot on the aqua just to kind of brighten it up a little with a highlight. And it just gives your design a little different look and dimension to it. Sometimes, too, I'll walk away from a piece and come back to it a little while later just to give myself a break from looking at it and rest your eyes from it for a little bit. Because sometimes when you're up close and personal, you start to do stuff and think, oh, that wasn't the same size as the other one, or it starts to feel tedious, or you just get so you're so close to it, you know, you're like, oh, that looks bad, or I made a mistake. But if you walk away and come back, you're like, wow, that's so pretty. <laughs> so... Sometimes you just need to do that, so walk away and come back to it, and then have a change of heart, probably. Yep, I think I'm going to leave it like that so I don't overwork it too much, because I kind of like it. So, this was our Misty Greens and Slate Blue Mandala, and a little bit of gray and white, but for accent. So, I hope you enjoyed doing this one with me today. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see my other videos, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And then also, I really, really welcome constructive feedback. Um, feel free to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Is there something that bothers you about it? Some people didn't like that I turned the stone when I work on it. Um, some people haven't liked the music in the past, which some of the some of the videos I can understand. <laughs> Um, but, you know, if you have questions about paint or paintbrushes or anything like that, please feel free. I try to answer as many as I can and get back to people because I love the collaboration. I love interacting with you all, and I look forward to doing it in future videos. So, I hope you like the stone today. I'm kind of excited about it. And I am going to wait my 24 hours, and then I'm going to varnish it. So I hope you all have a great day, and we'll do another one soon.